Right, I'm back, I've been on holiday, as you know from my update video, but I've got a new dedicated setup now for reactions, which means I can get them out a bit faster. Sorry, there's been a bit of delay. I know people have asked for some specific videos. I had a few technical issues with my new setup. That's all sorted now. I'm now back. I can get them out faster. I'm really excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. So let's crack on. Today, I'm gonna to start taking a look at what I've missed since I've been away. Someone sent me a link to an Oliver Anthony video called Moving Forward, where he talks a bit about his experience of everything and wanted to know my views on it. So here's my reaction to that video. I'm driving back home. I had uh, it's so a happy. crazy time in Currituck. I always have fun in Currituck. Whether it's 30 people or it's 12,000 people, uh, the Morris Farm Market is just, there's nothing else like it. So thanks to them for putting it on. Thanks to all y'all for coming out. There were people who, uh, who flew in, people that drove down from up north mind blown and uh i mean hell we signed and took pictures a good four hours after the show and it wasn't like people just came up and shook my hand they come up and they told me about the battles they've been dealing with uh, depression and suicide and money and you know those are real problems this song is so let's just take a moment to acknowledge that he hasn't mentioned anything about kind of himself as much subscriber numbers views popularity any of that stuff what he has focused on are individual people's stories and the battles that they have been dealing with you know real problem uh, so real people with real problems that have connected with what he's talking about in his songs and that's kind of what brings people together isn't it You know, those are real problems. This song is not something that I've, it's not like it's some masterpiece I've created. It's the masterpiece and, and the emotions of the song, it already exists within you. Sometimes it just takes the right song coming along to, to let those out. But my question to you is when, when Oliver Anthony's long gone and forgotten about, what can you do in your own life to maintain this energy, this positivity, this unity that I see among people like I have never seen before? What are the next steps to make life better for people? What can you do for your neighbor? There used to be such a strong sense of community in this country, and you still see it a lot in such good questions to ask you know what can you do in your own life to maintain this positivity and unity what are the next steps to make life better for people what can you do for your neighbor and these are the kind of questions that I would be dis discussing in therapy with someone opening up a conversation bringing awareness and bringing attention to something is usually the first step so Oliver has united people he's made people come together and think about things and reflect on things he's He's opened up a conversation and dialogue between people. He has brought that awareness and attention. But what next? In ACT, the therapy that I special in, which is what my second channel is all about, link in the description below, we look at this idea of what sort of person do you want to be? What values and characteristics do you want to live by? Because you do have a choice. We do have some element of control over our own behavior or if we don't or we feel like we don't we can learn to have that but once we do have some control <clears throat> excuse me we have a better handle on anxiety or depression and then what next how do you want to be what sort of person do you want to be known as that's what oliver is is asking here i think it's not about how you see him it's about how you want to see yourself if you want to have the quality or the value of, say, caring, then how can you translate that into a behavior, a thing that you do? He says, what can you do for your neighbor? And, you know, that's a really good example. It doesn't have to be a literal neighbor. Obviously, it, it can be anyone. But what is one small act you could do that embodies caring? 
And it can be simple. You know, you can smile at someone. You could say good morning to someone. How are you? You could help someone with something, you know, give a small amount of your time. There's loads of things you could possibly do. And every little thing that you do is a step toward living the life of the person you want to be. And he said near the end there that there used to be a, a, a sense of community and that's been lost. I completely agree. I feel it too. I see it here where I am. And it, it feels like, and I don't know much about this, but it feels like the government's answer seems to be something along the idea of, you know, this 15 minute towns or 15 minute cities, which I haven't looked too much into yet. But I'm very sceptical from what I, I have heard so far regarding the motives of such. So if you know more about this, then please let me know in the comments. I can take a look at that. I'm not sure if this idea of 15 minute towns is a consideration in America either. So you might not know anything about this. Right, I've talked enough there, I think. Way too much, as usual. Be such a strong sense of community in this country. And you still see it a lot in small town America, but even there it's dying out. Things just change too quickly these days, you know? But humans have the ability to possess such overwhelming compassion. Hmm. We do. And it seems like we've really let ourselves focus too much on hate. I mean, humans can manifest wicked amounts of hate. We've seen it all throughout Absolutely. world history. <coughs> Even in the last 150, 200 years. I mean, just some of the atrocities, the genocides, the war. Haven't we just? I mean, this is such a good point. You know, the Romans had cruelty as entertainment. Think of the gladiatorial games. Think about the suffering we have inflicted on people through the ages. In England, we used to have this thing called hang, drawn and quartered. You know, it wasn't enough that a person would be sentenced to death. But before that, they would be dragged by a horse cart, hung just until they reached the point of passing out. So the hanging didn't kill them and then disemboweled all in front of an audience where, you know, I don't think they were forced to watch. I think they were kind of interested in what was going on. And I think it happened to Guy Fawkes, maybe I'm well off there, which was what, the 16th or, or 17th century? I don't think he was hung, drawn and quartered. I think that was the plan, but something went wrong with that plan. But, you know, relatively speaking, that's not that long ago, all things considered. We live in an era where we have everything. You know, there were wars fought over spices. Like people died over spices. And now we can sit on the couch and we can order whatever spice we want from the comfort of our phone and the air conditioning. But we still want to fight. We still want to hate each other. We want to find reasons to hate each other. And I'm no Dr. Phil, but I just feel that in this moment in time, when so many people are feeling the same frustrations, it would be wonderful to capitalize on that and just use that positive energy to help other people in your life, maybe people that are different than you, people that you wouldn't normally connect with. I can tell you from my experience and the jobs I've had and all the people I've talked to, everyone has a really interesting story if you just give them the time to talk. It's easy to walk down the sidewalk by somebody and look down at the ground, look at your phone. But that really is mm -hmm. a big part of the problem. We're all so disconnected from each other. I mean, we aren't, aren't we? In a time where we are all connected more than ever in terms of uh, scope and breadth of connectivity, it feels like we've lost the ability to actually sit in a room and have conversations. You know, I, I go to a lot of workshops and conferences about uh, kind of therapeutic practices. And I usually arrive quite early to make sure I'm there on time. And everyone who, who else is there early will sit in the waiting room or the conference room, you know, head down, looking at their phone when we are literally sat in a room with a shared common purpose, you know, because we're all there for the same reason, with time to spare. But we don't even communicate with each other. 
And we're therapists, you know, we're healthcare professionals. We should be, you know, promoting that. We should be modeling that. I watch couples in cafes and restaurants and, you know, sat on benches in town. And although that sounds a little bit pervy when I say it, my point is they, they are quite often staring at phones and not even talking to each other. You know, phones where social media companies literally use psychological tactics, um, you know, to increase dopamine, to make us feel better, but also to use anger and fear to keep us on the platform for longer, taking us away from the things that really, really matter right there in the moment. And this isn't going to turn into a, a social media rant, he says, with a, a, a social media channel and presence. But the point is more losing those close personal connections we are missing out on. That really is a big part of the problem. We're all so disconnected from each other. We need to find a way to take this energy from this anomaly of a song, from this stupid guy that... I mean, look, I appreciate the compliments, but I'm, no, I'm not a good musician. I hardly know my way around the guitar. My singing's okay. That's not what made this. It's you. And, and the struggles in your life. In two miles. That's what's made this take the what interchange it is. on the right. Find a way to start fixing those problems. Find a way to start having good conversations with people that live around you. That's all I want out of this. Humble, I think the word is. You know, he seems really, really genuine. I don't think personally that a measure of a good of a good musician is specifically in the skill of playing the instrument or you know being able to technically sing well for me um, a good musician is someone who connects with me and and you know emotes me I don't think that's a word but makes me feel something and I wonder how this is impacting him in terms of his life direction and moving forwards like the video is is called and he's talking more about you know moving forwards for us the people who have listened to him and like his message. But I'm interested in how he's going to move forwards with all of this. So I'm going to check out some more stuff on his channel. That's about four weeks old now, that video. So there's probably some more up-to-date things. I'm going to check that out now. Um, probably record some more stuff. I'm just going to upload videos now as I do them. I'm not going to wait weekly as, as I was before. Um, I'm just going to do as much as I can. Really hope you enjoy it. Um, if you've got any thoughts about 15 minute cities, if you've got any thoughts about how we do move forward, if you've got any thoughts about how we can better connect with each other, because, you know, people have very, very, very different perspectives of, of how they see things. And sometimes it feels like you've got to be quite cautious in what you say. Um, otherwise, you'll just get, you know, completely dismissed. Um, so, you know, let's open up a conversation. Let's talk about it. I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.